This lecture is on the biosynthesis of polyketide antibiotics presented by myself, Christopher Chibwe, Kang Fu Ho, Jackie Rogers, and Elgin Filfo. We're also associated with Washington University in St. Louis in the EECE department. First, we'll introduce what polyketides are and what antibiotics are, followed by discussing the enzymes that are used to produce these polyketides, and then how they're currently being produced in the medications and the current production, then how synthetic biology can potentially help in this area before looking at a specific case study of polyketide synthesis from yeast and the industrial and economic opportunities in this space. Now let's introduce polyketides as antibiotics. Antibiotics are compounds which inhibit the growth of microbes such as penicillin. And they can do this by a variety of mechanisms. For example, penicillin damages the cell walls thus causing the cells to rupture and die. They're very important because they're used to treat bacterial infections. However, overuse of antibiotics has led to an increasing number of strains which are antibiotic resistant. Moreover, over time, there have been less and less new antibiotics discovered, thus leading to the antibiotic resistance crisis. Polyketides are secondary metabolites which contain multiple beta-hydroxyketone or if this was in hydrogen, beta-hydroxyaldehyde groups. Uh, over the scaffold, there can be a variety of structures and thus a variety of functions, including but not limited to antibiotics. So to be clear, not all antibiotics are polyketides and not all polyketides are antibiotics. Um, all polyketides, however, are naturally produced by bacteria, fungi, and plants. One example of an antibiotic polyketide is streptomycin, which inhibits cell growth by inhibiting protein synthesis. Next, we will talk about the enzymatic pathways that are used for polyketide production. Naturally, there are three polyketide synthesis pathways known as type 1, type 2, and type 3. All of them start with acetyl-CoA as their monomer unit. Seen in the diagrams, the colored circles are a protein subunit, and the letters stand for what the subunit does, such as AT are acetyl transferases. Type 1 are very complex multi-unit proteins that seen in the diagram, it has multiple modules that do particular reactions from adding the acetyl-CoA monomers to then further reacting them to make the final polyketide product. Type 1s are known to create antibiotics with lactone rings that inhibit the 50S ribosomes. Then there is type 2 that make aromatic compounds. It starts with a multi-protein complex that adds the acetyl-CoAs into a long chain and then has individual proteins that further react that chain into the final aromatic product. Type 3 are different from type 1 and 2. They do not use a protein complex. Every step is done with a single protein. And they also don't use the ACP modules that type 1 and type 2 do that they're able to react directly with acetyl-CoA. To compare the three types, you can see the product is different where type 1 make macrocyclic, type 2 make aromatic compounds, type 3 make chalcones. The enzyme type is then also different because one uses the large protein complexes, type 2 has the complex at the beginning and then individual proteins after that, and type 3 has individual proteins for every step, which then make the way you can look at for modifying and engineering different, where because type 1 has such large complex proteins, it's hard to understand every step and be able to customize those for new products. Type 2 is able to use the one complex that makes the long chain, and then you can design proteins to react that chain further into a desired product. So that's promising. And then type three is thought to be the most practical for engineering because it's easier for scientists to understand the activities of one protein at a time. So you can create the custom proteins and have all the ones you need to create your desired product. So that is the most promising for moving forward. Now that we have a better understanding of the mechanism of polyketide production, we will discuss the production of polyketides for use of antibiotics and its limitations. 
Streptomyces are a genus of bacteria that are able to utilize the free polyketates and phase pathways that we discussed to, produ to produce uh, polyketides naturally. Because they are able to naturally accomplish polyketide production, they are an ideal genus of bacteria to study in order, in order to understand the native pathways and identify ways in which we might transfer those native pathways into other organisms to uh, produce polyketides on a larger scale. Because uh, polyketides are an untapped source for new possible antibiotics, um, in the context of antibiotic resistance, uh, understanding polyketides and the production pathways within Streptomyces is very important. Um, as you can see below, there is a whole variety of polyketide structures and a variety of uh, Streptomyces species that are able to accomplish uh, polyketide production utilizing these different pathways, which are described here in the images below. Despite the possible opportunities and advantages in the production of polyketides for antibiotics, we do know that we may face various limitations in implementing polyketide production on a large scale. The first limitation um, would have to do with the fact that polyketide production requires complex production regulation. This is due to the fact that polyketides are considered a protective secondary metabolite, which are often produced much less frequently than other metabolites that are required for survival and also may require very specific environmental conditions in order to increase the production of uh, polyketides. The second limitation um, is, a, is a limitation uh, that is due to the overall drug discovery and research industry in which the large uh, possible antibiotics that are currently on market um, and, are, and are available for use often lead to a bottleneck in the development of new possible antibiotics. Uh, and the third limitation of polyketide production is due to the fact that poly the PKS pathways are very sensitive to, the lo to enzyme location and uh, precursor location. Therefore, uh, the production efficiency is very dependent on if the enzymes and the precursors are uh, correctly and efficiently channeled in order to optimize polyketide uh, production. And the fourth limitation to polyketide production with the PKS pathways um, has to do with the challenges that we will face um, in terms of using the PKS pathway in heterogeneous hosts or a non-native host, where the native host is the genus of Streptomyces. This main challenge that, that we would predict is the fact that Streptomyces uh, preferentially uses codons with a CG terminal, which differs from many of the well-studied microorganisms in which they preferentially use codons uh, that have an AT prevalence. And so you can see this depicted visually on the image on the right, where we see um, the majority of species like E. coli or Bacillus, which um, are all collected um, on the right on the right hand side of the figure, um, are more similar to each other than they are to Streptomyces in terms of their codon usage preference. So the implication that this has um, is in regards to the efficiency of production, especially in regards to uh, the role of tRNA. So um, tR tRNA is important in terms of decoding uh, the message from mRNA. And we would expect that in species that have codons prevalent in AT, they would produce and utilize tRNA that is more sensitive to AT codons. While in um, species of the genus of Streptomyces, we would expect that tRNA would be more sensitive to codons um, with GC prevalence. Therefore, we would expect um, challenges in terms of optimization of efficiency um, of polyketide production. While it is not um, impossible to produce polyketides with these um, heterogeneous toasts, uh, we do see that we may face challenges in terms of uh, producing polyketides in an industrial scale with non-native hosts. 
despite the fact that polyketides um, offer an untapped source of compounds for possible antibiotics. Now we're going to discuss how synthetic biology can be used as a tool in antibiotic discovery and synthesis. In synthetic biology, cells are engineered to be able to produce chemicals they naturally cannot produce. In our case, we want them to make antibiotic polyketides. First, we need the individual genes to encode for the polyketide scaffold as well as the tailoring enzymes. These are called the parts. And then those parts are assembled together into a device. And then the device is inserted into a robust host cell or chassis. And specifically with polyketides, we're interested in enzyme engineering of the PKS. This involves making changes to the enzyme, which would lead to changes in the polyketide. And by making these structural changes, we then change the functional, the function of the polyketide. In this way, we're able to create libraries of novel compounds and expand the diversity. These techniques are useful beyond antibiotic function, and research is being done by the Kiesling Lab at Berkeley and by the COSA Lab at Stanford to understand specifically with the PKS and enzyme engineering. In the next three to four minutes, I will show you the case study regarding the polyketide synthesis in yeast cells. As we know, the polyketides are kinds of secondary metabolites from the bacteria, fungi, and ants. A streptomyces is kind of a gram-positive mycelial soil bacteria. This kind of bacteria could produce or synthesize two-thirds of all chemical antibiotics and other bioactive compounds. Actinic holding is one of antibiotics could be produced by the streptomyces cilia color. There are some researches indicate that the actinic holding production could be increased to 200 mg per liter through the optimization of the median composition in a lab scale. However, the host bacteria may have some problems to make they are difficult to be applied to industrial production. For example, it is not easily cultured to high cell density causing the low production. Also, it will need a complicated culturing conditions. Therefore, a paper in 2020 from Dopocinus, they used is to be the heterologous host and the employed the PKS type 3, which are found in the plants to synthesize a PK type synthesis to express antibiotics at the holding pathway in this. Finally, they successfully produced the bioactive bacterial polyketides dihydrocalophogen, DHK, but not the target antibiotics anti-actin holding. They think that the reason is that the actin holding is toxic to the yeast. Also, they didn't produce the final target compound actin holding. They successfully express the PKS type 3 and produce the polyketides in eukaryotic cells. And, and they proved that it is a programmable to produce a secondary metabolism, which we want. Next, I will compare the industrial opportunities with other antibiotics production. Penicillin, which are the most famous and earliest found antibiotics, from the first found in the 1982 to 2015, the production was increased from the 0 0.001 gram per liter to 50 gram per liter. And the cost is reduced from the $19 per kilogram to $10 per kilogram. The antinol holding, which is produced by the streptomyces set color, the maximum production title is around 0 0.2 gram per liter and the cost is still very expensive now. The new technology which produces polyketides from a eukaryotic cell like yeast 
could produce polyketides, but not antibodies as in the holding right now. This means that there is a lot of space still need more study or development in the future. Okay, finally, there are some summary points. The first is some polyketides could be used as antibiotics. And there are three kinds of polyketides in death pathways. And there are many challenges we have to overcome in the future to producing the polyketides. And the synthetic biology and the enzyme engineering could be used to overcome this challenge. In a case study, PK's type 3 engineer in yeast produced a DHK, which is a precursor to antibiotics. And there is potential to increase production to an economically viable label. And we still need a lot of study and development in the future. Here are some references we use in this presentation. And that's all of our meeting today. And thank you for your listening.